Hello. So here I'm going to demo the old version of WASP. This is the Web Audio Signal Processor. And unlike the new version, this one has an interface. And basically it just allows you to interact with the Web Audio API through these little um, jQuery windows that you can um, drag around. So for its most basic, I've made an oscillator. And that oscillator is working, but we can't hear it yet because we haven't said to the speakers. But it's going to be very loud, so I'm actually going to... I've created this gain. I set it to 0.1. Now I put the oscillator into that. We still can't hear anything because we need a destination. Destination means this is our speakers here. And um, now we just connect it. And you can hear we've got an oscillator at 440. So that's an A pitch. And we can also take a look at it. So these can be resized. And if we connect from there, we can see there is our oscillator. But it looks a little quiet, so we can actually plug into that before we turn the gain down. And there, now we can really see it. And we have an oscilloscope and a frequency bar. The frequency bar is not that exciting right now. Um, but we're going to use this gain as kind of the final stage in our audio chain before the destination. So we'll just run the analyzer off it for now. And we can create as many analyzers as we want. You know, I can, I can have one here. And look at that. Wow. So now this isn't super exciting. Um, but we can do things like, okay, stay with me now. So I'm setting this gain to a thousand. I'm adding another oscillator, setting it through this gain. So you do not want to connect this to the output because you'll clip the crap out of your speakers. But we can plug it into the frequency of this oscillator and we get some different sounds and we can explore with changing. See, so I just set this oscillator to one, and now we get this fun, wow, 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 you know, um, and we can change the type, so we can make this square wave, yeah, or sawtooth, and this is changing the sound of the oscillator we're hearing, but we can also change the oscillator that's controlling this wow to a square, and you see how now we just have the a very sudden transition because our control oscillator is a square wave instead of a sine wave. We can switch it to sawtooth. And you may be wondering why I don't have both kinds of sawtooth in here. And they actually sound identical in most applications. So, there's probably a good reason why I could have done the inverse saw wave. Um, the Web Audio API certainly supports it, but I didn't see the point at the time. So, where things get weird is we can sort of keep doing this. What if we feed another oscillator, a sine wave, at a frequency of 2? And these frequencies are times a second that the oscillator oscillates. So, we've got one and two now, and we can actually plug this right into the game. And now we've got both of those oscillators doing some stuff. And we'll make it four. And now we've got this kind of fun, unstable, almost DJ scratch. is just one um, one filter. So you might be used to using EQ um, either a graphical EQ with maybe four filters in it or a um, 
um, space and on the name. A uh, 16 or 32 channel um, linear EQ where you have a little dial for each one. So those would each be their own individual filters. So one of these is literally just one. Um, and you can see we've got type, low pass, high pass, band pass, low shelf, high shelf, peaking, notch, and all pass. All the filters you could want. And that is every filter that the Web Audio API supports. So we can um, well connect this again. And you see we're filtering a high pass above 20 hertz. So 20 hertz is pretty low, and this probably isn't going to sound too much different. But you can see we've taken some of the energy out. However, if I up this to 440, in. I'm hearing that in stereo. And I'm not sure why. Hmm. So maybe that's not quite working. Let's see what happens if we set an oscillator to one and make it control. So that is working. That might be a bug. I want to reiterate that I haven't really touched this project in years. It was one of the first things I did as a fledgling web developer. Um, but anyway, there we go. That's sort of a sloppy uh, introduction to how Wasp works because it is a fairly complicated thing if you don't really know um, much about signal processing. And you can tell from the video I haven't thought about signal processing at this level of a level in quite a while either. Um, but you can play with it on GitHub. There's a link to it in the description. I'll turn this off so you can hear me clearly. There's a link to the GitHub project page in the description and you can check it out and play around with it. Um, the new version of Wasp is currently just a, um, a framework for creating interactive audio applications and um, it doesn't have a user interface yet but that's coming there's a couple other features I want to get in there before it's really worth playing with although it does actually support all these nodes and it supports an extra 
kind of node called a control node that can send uh, sort of non-signal signals that, that update when it's updated at the base. And this is how I'm going to implement things like MIDI keyboard um, notes and complex synthesizers and um, things like that. Well, the settings for things like that, to be clear. The actual um, MIDI notes going in are going to need to be signals because they need to be timed very precisely. But control signals are any um, sort of signal that doesn't need to be timed precisely and can be used to uh, you know, control parameters. So you could you could control the delay um, of a of a delay note with a control signal that's not going to be um, timed completely like an audio signal, but will still uh, be close enough to be musically effective. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, have a good day.